Dr. Courtney Westhoff. I'm a pediatric neurologist at Stanford University. Today I'm going to demonstrate the modified SARNAT exam. This is a grading exam to look for evidence of neonatal encephalopathy. And it's become the standard for a diagnosis of potential hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy in particular. The modified SARNAT exam consists of six categories. And in each category, you look for findings to decide whether or not the newborn is normal, has mild encephalopathic signs, or moderate or severe encephalopathic signs. Now this baby we're going to examine today is normal, but I'll demonstrate some of the maneuvers and discuss some of the findings if it were an abnormal exam. So when you're examining a baby for SARNAT scoring, ideally you want the baby to be calm and awake. For some babies, they are not awake or you can't get them to calm, but ideally that would be the state of the baby. And the first thing you do is you look at the level of consciousness. Does the baby respond to stimulation? Are they alert and aware? And our baby here is very awake, behaving appropriately, fusses a little bit with exam, but can be soothed. So this is a normal level of alertness or level of consciousness because the baby does cry appropriately but can be calmed down, can be settled. In a baby who has moderate encephalopathy, they might be lethargic, they might not be responsive to stimulation, or in a baby who has severe encephalopathy, they might be comatose, not responsive at all. Some of the things you can look for to try to decide whether or not the baby has normal alertness is their spontaneous cry, how they react to touch, whether they maintain attention. This healthy, normal baby is maintaining good visual attention at my face, watching my face as I'm talking and as it moves. Uh, these are all signs of normal alertness or normal level of consciousness. The next category that you look for in the SARNAT system is spontaneous activity. A healthy term baby is going to have spontaneous movements. And I'll just let go so that we can see what baby does on his own. And what you can see is that even at rest, there are spontaneous movements in all the extremities. You see that there's movements of both arms and the hands. There's some small finger movements. There were some movements of the legs. I'll turn the head a little bit so you can see the face. With stimulation, there's even more movement. You see a response in the trunk, the arms, spontaneous movements of facial movements, and nice fluid qualities to this. So this is all normal, spontaneous activity. In a baby who has moderate encephalopathy, they might have decreased movements, not move as much. And in a baby with severe encephalopathy, there would be no movements. The next category in the Sarnat scale is posture. You want to see what the baby's resting posture is. Again, ideally when the baby is awake. And a normal posture, the baby will have the arms and the legs drawn up towards the torso. So you can see for this baby, the resting posture, the elbows are bent. The hands are somewhat closed, but not tightly fisted. You can see that the legs have a bend at the knee and that they're flexed towards the trunk. This healthy baby is starting to fall asleep, and when babies are asleep, they tend to have a more relaxed posture, but you do want to see the limbs brought in towards the torso. In a baby who has moderate encephalopathy, you might find distal flexion at the extremities, so you might find flexion at the wrists, at the feet, and in a baby who has severe encephalopathy, they might have a, a completely flaccid posture, meaning that the arms and the legs are extended and abducted from the body without any resting tone bringing them in towards the torso. The next category in the Sarnat exam is tone. There are many different ways to check tone, and it's helpful to be familiar with a couple of approaches so that you have a few ways to assess it. A normal term baby, to check tone in the extremities, you want to feel how much resistance there is to movement so one way to do that is to hold the ankle and lift the baby's leg up off the cot or off the bed. A normal baby will maintain flexion at the leg even as the bottom comes up off the bed. That's normal tone. 
And as you lift even more, they'll start to have extension at the knee. That's appropriate. A baby who has decreased tone or is hypotonic may not have that same resistance. It may be that as you lift the leg up off the bed, they stretch immediately and don't maintain that nice flexion at the knee. A baby who's flaccid or with very minimal tone will have no resistance at all. You can also do a similar maneuver at the arm. You can hold by the wrist, lift the arm up off the bed, and you want to see that the baby maintains flexion at the elbow until the point where you get the shoulder up off the bed, and then there should be some relaxation. So some resistance, and then relaxation as the baby comes up off the bed. A baby who has decreased tone will have reduced resistance, may lose that flexion at the elbow before the shoulder comes off the bed, and a baby who's flaccid will have no resistance at all. Another maneuver to check tone, can check for the tone in the trunk or in the neck. To do this, you put your hands underneath baby's trunk and head. You support the head and the neck. And you lift baby up off the bed, feeling for the resistance as the baby's head comes up. You want to support the head. You don't let it completely lax. And a term neonate will have some effort to keep the head up in line with the trunk, although they may not be able to maintain it completely in line with the trunk. A baby who has decreased tone, you're going to feel diminished effort at the, the neck. And a baby, again, who's flaccid will have no effort. Another way of doing this maneuver is to hold the baby up in a sitting posture to support the shoulder girdle, and then to see how well he can hold his head up. And most babies will be able to get their head up for one or two seconds at midline before it will wobble over to one side or the other. Again, a baby who has moderate encephalopathy might not be able to ever get all the way up to midline, and a baby who has severe encephalopathy, who's, who's frankly hypotonic, won't be able to get the head up at all. The fifth category in the Sarnat screening exam is reflexes, and this commonly includes the suck reflex and the moro reflex. So to assess for suck, you can use a pacifier, you can use a gloved finger, And a normal term neonate, when they're awake, will suck on the finger or on the pacifier and maintain stripping movements, that milking of the tongue up against the finger of the pacifier, for at least three to four sucks. So this baby sucks reflexively on my finger and keeps sucking. And that's normal for a healthy term baby. A baby who has moderate encephalopathy might have a weak suck or might be able to close the mouth around the finger but not maintain a sucking reflex. A baby with severe encephalopathy might have no suck at all. Another reflex to check is the Moro reflex. Now these are two different reflexes, but they still fall in the same category of checking for reflexes. You want to score the Sarnat exam based on the most severe finding. The Moro needs to be checked when the baby's awake. You can look and see, does the baby have a response either to sound, like a clap, or does the baby respond to any sort of movement? A normal awake baby will have a symmetric Moro reflex that will be complete in response to stimulation. A baby with moderate encephalopathy might have an incomplete Moro reflex, meaning that the arms extend initially but don't come all the way back to the trunk. And a baby with severe encephalopathy will have no moral reflex at all. Again, for the reflex category, you can check both suck and moro, but the score that you use is going to be the most severely abnormal finding. So for example, if you have a moderately abnormal moro, but a normal suck, you would score that Sarnat category based on the more abnormal finding, the moderately abnormal moro. Finally, the last category is autonomic responses. This can be assessed through a number of ways, and again, you score based on the most severe finding. So one way to do this is to check the baby's heart rate, to check and see if there's tachycardia, bradycardia, or a normal heart rate. If a baby is already on a monitor, you can use that to check. Otherwise, you can use your stethoscope.
and this healthy term baby has a normal heart rate. For a baby with moderate encephalopathy, you would expect bradycardia, a lowered heart rate, and babies with severe encephalopathy can have a variable heart rate, not maintained in a consistent range. Another way to check autonomic function is to check the pupillary reflex. Normally, you would expect to see the pupils reactive to light. For a baby who has moderate encephalopathy, their pupils might still be reactive, but might be sluggish. You might see that their pupils are constricted. For a baby with severe encephalopathy, pupils can be fixed, non-reactive at all, or could be asymmetric. When performing that element of the exam, you have to be mindful of whether or not the baby's received any medications in advance, because that can alter the pupillary response, particularly if opiates have been used. And so for autonomic function, again, you can check heart rate, you can check pupillary response, and the score that you assign will be based on the most abnormal finding of all of the maneuvers that you choose. In total, that's six elements to the Sarnat scale. Level of alertness, spontaneous activity, posture, tone, reflexes, and autonomic function. And the category of encephalopathy is assigned based on the number of findings in each category, looking for at least three abnormal findings to say that a neonate has an abnormal exam. So for example, if there is one finding that's normal, three findings that are moderately abnormal, and two findings that are severely abnormal, that neonate would be classified as having moderate encephalopathy because the majority of findings are in the moderate category. Happily, this is a healthy term baby, and so all of the findings are normal.